Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. listen to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Indeed you are, people. Welcome back to another Caribbean Cricket Podcast edition episode. My name is Marshall St. Patrick Hewitt, one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, and I'm back as ever, people, to chop it up, to look at another issue, put that out there into the ether and let you lot think about it. Get back to me in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on the, the, the podcast feed of your or of your preference, you can, I guess, at us, at Carib Cricket on Twitter, Instagram, etc., etc. As ever, people, let's get some admin out of the way. First things first, thank you to everyone who's been engaging with the content um, as of late, whether on podcast apps or whether on YouTube itself. There's definitely been a, a kind of massive uptake in those engaging with the content. So thank you to all of those. Thank you to all of those who have become patrons in, re in recent days. Um, all whatever little bit of support you can give, all of that is appreciated. For those watching on YouTube, um, and even for those listening, of course, you can follow the Caribbean Cricket Podcast at Carib Cricket, Twitter, Instagram. You can head to our website, www.caribbeancricketpodcast.com. If you are listening to this or watching this on YouTube, please like, share, subscribe, hit that bell button for the notification. As you know, by now we're on the road to 4K YouTube subscribers. At the time of recording, we are currently on 3,884. So we are 116 subscribers away from hitting 4K. Let's hit that milestone and then we move. Then we start moving to 5K people. So if you're new to this particular um, medium or media venture, please do subscribe to the video. Well, Maybe watch the whole video or maybe listen to this all and then subscribe in, uh, with regards to whatever particular medium you're listening to. As I said earlier on, you can support the Caribbean Cricket Podcast by becoming a patron, www.patreon.com forward slash Caribbean Cricket. Whether you're a long time listener, whether you're new, if you like the content we deliver, as little as two, whatever your currency is, dollars, euros, pounds, etc., you can become a supporter of the Caribbean Creator po Podcast and the content that we put out. For those who don't know, uh, in the last, what, day and a half or so, a new episode of West Indies on 9994DM is out, Barat Sundaresan. If you don't know Barrett Sundaresan, are you really a cricket fan? But Barrett Sundaresan joined me and uh, him and I chopped up um, the Australia versus West Indies tour, went into kind of all the key talking points around that tour. And I, I listened back to the episode um today i um, pat myself on the back here but i genuinely think it's a really good episode so after this if you haven't already done so do go and queue up and listen to again whether on the podcast app of your choice or on the 9994 dm app or whether on youtube go and listen to that episode looking at the the, the review of the west indies tour of australia but anyways that's all the admin out of the way this particular episode what i wanted to look at today was brandon king and the reason why I want to look at Brandon King is because there's not many West Indian fans who, and when I say West Indian fans, I mean those who actually study West Indies cricket. There's not many who haven't mentioned Brandon Brandon King's name in the last, certainly in the last year. For those who probably follow the game in a bit more detail, they've probably been mentioning Brandon Brandon King's name for like the last three, four years, saying he should probably be in and around the West Indies test setup. Certainly at the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, we've been big fans of Brandon. We felt that Brandon should have been around the test team setup a long time ago. Alas, he's not. So what I'm going to do right now, because ultimately the point of this video is to present the case for Brandon King. I don't know if there is a particular position that's open for Brandon King in the in the test team. I actually think the positions are quite locked in at the moment, but there's no reason why Brandon shouldn't be in a test squad in the near future. And what I'm going to attempt to do in this video is break down why he deserves a spot. But as ever, you know what I'm like. And the uh, Caribbean Cricket Podcast, we like to present 
the arguments with stats and facts to support it. Okay, first things first, Brandon is 28 years old. He turned 28 year, 28 years old. He turned that a day ago. He Is he in the prime of his career? If he's not in the prime of his career, he's approaching it. It's, to be fair, it's probably outrageous that Brandon has got to 28 and not featured in a West Indies Test Match squad at any point in his career. Now, there are reasons and mitigating factors why Brandon hasn't featured in a West Indies squad, but a West Indies Test squad, I should point out. But even when I present those mitigating factors, the overall sentiment for me is that we are so rigid in our thinking when it comes to selection that I think the biggest hint was there's so many issues in West Indies cricket, but let's just focus on selection. One of the biggest hindrances to selection in the modern era of West Indies is one, um, too much of a um, loyalty to a kind of core group of players. So that's issue number one. Now, when people say to me, what do you mean, Mash, by too much loyalty to a core group of players? Who were, ask yourself this question, who were the last set of players to break through and get into the West Indies test squad? and cement their place. Other than, obviously, Jaden Seals is the most recent, but I'll tell you the names. Nkrumah Bonner, Carl Mayers, Josh De Silva, and more, more recently, um, Jaden Seals and Tay Shandipal. But I'll leave Seals and Shandipal out for a minute, right? Bonner, Mayers, De Silva only got into the West Indies test squad at the start of 2021 because 12 of the more established players pulled out of the Bangladesh tour, which meant the selectors had no option other than to turn to who they felt were the next best lot of cricketers. Bonner, De Silva and Mayers took the opportunity and as a result, they have pretty much cemented themselves in the West Indies test squad going forward and made it hard for players who pulled out of that tour to find uh, out of that Bangladesh tour to now find a way back in on a regular basis. The reason why I reference that tour is because it took that tour for us to get away from calling the same set of players again, again and again. To use an example, Shea Hope or a Roston Chase. Obviously, Roston's back in again, but we were rewarding failure for a long time in our test squad and it took a pandemic and players pulling out for us to actually turn to a brand new set of players obviously in recent times Tay Shandipal has just debuted um in the Australia tour Jaden Seals obviously debuted off the back of his um um kind of performances in the under 19 world cup they kind of they took him to New Zealand to just basically travel with the squad and eventually Jaden has broken through as well okay now I guess why did I reference that point I think I referenced that point to say that we don't have selectors that think outside the box too often even if you look at Tej why did Tej play in Australia he played in Australia because John Campbell caught a case John Campbell caught a case and got a four-year drug ban if Campbell hadn't caught that case do you think Tej and Nepal would have debuted in Australia probably not so, again, you can even use that example to kind of highlight the point I'm trying to make. As selectors in the modern era, West Indian selectors are too conservative. I don't think they think outside the box enough. And I think that's to the hindrance, generally speaking, of playing our best players. I'm just sorry. Best players is possibly the wrong word to use. But, okay, playing some of our more talented players. This video is supposed to be about Brandon King, but all of what I'm doing so far is setting context. Let me use another example. Why have Evan Lewis, Nicholas Puran not played test cricket? Now, some people say in response to that, Mash, they don't play four-day cricket. Uh, Puran's only played X number of games. Lewis doesn't care about playing four-day cricket. I hear all that. But if West Indian selectors continue to base all of their judgment based on our domestic cricket only and don't think outside the box and don't identify that such and such a player is talented, but they may be playing West Indies white ball cricket and that prevents them really showcasing their talent. If we continue to have that conservative mindset, we'll never call certain players up. I long advocated that some, I long advocated that selectors, and I don't just mean Desmond Haynes, it could have been Roger Harper before Desmond Haynes or back to Courtney Brown's era or whoever else was a selector. Sometimes what you have to do with some of these players is you just call them up. You just call them up 
anyway because you know they're talented. You can see they've got talent. What's, and then you put them in a position where if they don't want to play test cricket for the West Indies, at least make them have to make that call and make that judgment. But we don't think outside the box. All of this is context to basically set up where I'm going with this Brandon King argument. Let me give you some stats and facts. In the 2016-2017 four-day championship, Brandon King, whilst batting in the middle order for Jamaica, played four matches and averaged 52 in that four-day championship. Remember, a normal a normal round of matches should be 10, right? He got 100, 150. The following year, he played nine matches, and granted, he only averaged 27, but he hit 350s. The year after that, 2018-19, he played seven matches, and he averaged 48, 100, 650s. At that point where Brandon King averaged 48, so it had, I'll repeat that again, so he'd 2016 17, four matches averaged 52. 2017 18, nine matches averaged 27. 2018 19, seven matches averaged 48. At that point in time, Brandon King was called up to the West Indies A team that played uh, three unofficial kind of test matches against India A. Brandon played the third quote unquote test match of that A team tour. This is just before pandemic, obviously. And Brandon scored 77 in that unofficial test match against India A. In the summer, sorry, get some water. In the summer of 2019, Brandon King then had his breakout CPL season, the season where Guyana won 12 in a row and then flopped in the final, but basically were the best side in CPL that year in 2019. Brandon King was the MVP of the tournament that year and basically had a franchise season opening for the Amazon Warriors. That was the moment at which Brandon King's career went that way. For those who are watching, for those who are listening rather than watching the visuals, I'm signaling right. His career was supposed to go left, but it went right instead. Why? Because of his CPL exploits with Guyana Amazon Warriors. It is my belief, yes, okay, the pandemic came, but it, it is my belief that at, on, sorry to start again, it is my belief up to the summer of 2019, Brandon King was likely to have been called up to a test match squad, right? So much so that when West Indies returned to playing international cricket in the summer of 2020, the pandemic series against England, when cricket kind of returned again internationally, West Indies took 26 players on tour for that squad. Because remember, you had to basically have they had to carry an entire second 11 because they had to have warm-up matches. They played essentially themselves, right? But they also had to have COVID replacements. Inexplicably, despite King's exploits in the four-day championship, despite him having been called up to the West Indies A side and having delivered against India A in the third unofficial test, somehow... He wasn't, cast, he wasn't classed to be one of the top 26 players in the Caribbean at that point in time. That was in the summer of 2020. Since the pandemic, Brandon King has only played two first-class matches. So since that season, when he, when he played seven matches and averaged 48 in red ball cricket, 106.50s, he has only played two first-class matches since then. The most recent one he played was this uh, earlier this year when he came off West Indies duty briefly, flew home, banged out 119 not out, and then had to fly off West Indies duty again. Can you imagine? So Brandon King has basically played two first Red Bull matches domestic in three years. I'll say that again, he's played two Red Bull matches in three years. When you look at it like that, I totally get why selectors would be like, well, boy, we can't call up Brandon King because he hasn't got the, the recent numbers or the performances to back up calling him in Red Bull cricket. But that's not his fault. Every first class season we've had, um, well, we have, have we even had one? Um, the 19, yeah, sorry, we've had two kind of seasons. So the 2019-2020 season, which got aborted after eight first class games, Brandon was playing for the West Indies. He play, went. He travelled to India 
um, during that season. He then played He played in the series at home against Ireland and then travelled to Sri Lanka to play in that white ball series as well. So even when the pandemic came and cancelled the first-class season after eight matches, Brandon missed the whole season because he was on West Indies duty, white ball duty. Why was he on West Indies white ball duty? Because of that stellar CPL season in 2019. Even when we returned this year for our first class season, the five match five match rounds of first class seat of the first class seasons that we had this year, Brandon was on West Indies duty. He travelled to India um, to play in the white ball series there earlier in the year, and then immediately came back, scored one hundred and nineteen not out, and then flew to the Netherlands to play in the the white ball series there. There hasn't been enough opportunity for Brandon King to stake to, to stake his claim since 2019. Now, the question people have to ask themselves is this: the West Indies uh, new season of Red Bull, new Red Bull season, is probably due to start around February. 2023 because teams are already in preparation now so the, the the new red bull season is due to start either late january or certainly early february i would imagine at the latest right you would think even if that is the case brandon is going to miss that as well why because west indies are traveling to south africa for red bull cricket and white ball cricket so if the selectors, I guess the point I'm trying to make to both people listening to this and to West Indian selectors is, if Brandon King is in your thinking and you can understand having seen him play white ball cricket, that he's a classy batter, right? And he's in your thinking, when will the opportunity come for him to prove himself? The answer is likely never because he's a staple, um, he's, a, he's, he's, he's a set selection, right? In, in the West Indies white ball setup. Our white ball cricket tends to coincide with our red ball season. So when are you expecting Brandon to prove himself? You have to start thinking outside the box. If you have established that Brandon clearly has ability that you think would suit the red ball game, you can't wait around for him to now prove that again in a red ball season because he's not going to get enough games in that red ball season. West Indies are due, allegedly, to travel to um, Zimbabwe in January for two test matches. That's what we've been told. It hasn't been officially announced when the dates are and so on and so forth. But we're under the impression that West Indies will be travelling to Zimbabwe for two test matches. At this moment in time, and I don't know how many West Indian fans know this, Brandon is signed up to play in the Bangladesh Premier League for Camilla Victorians, I think they're called. That season of the 2023 Bangladesh Premier League runs from the 5th of January to the 16th of February. So West Indian selectors, I'm speaking directly to you now. If you have looked at our batting lineup, right? So at the moment, if everyone's fit, it's Bonner at three, Blackwood at four, Mayers at five. Who knows who's at six? Will it be Chase? Is it Holder? Who knows, right? But let's just say that's our top six. Obviously, Craig and Tage to open. For fans listening to this, as well as the selectors, do you think that Brandon King is a better batter than any of those people? If you do, how do you plan to get him into the West Indies test setup? Now, if we are going to Zimbabwe and certain players won't play in that, let's say certain players are going to be rested for that particular series. I don't know if they will be, but they, I mean, it's not like the series counts for anything. It's not part of any kind of world test championship. So let's just say for argument's sake that, the selectors look at the fact that the Zimbabwe series doesn't count for anything. And they say, you know what, this is our time to experiment and have a look at a few players. Are you going to call Brandon King up? Are you going to give Brandon King a phone call? Have you already given Brandon King a phone call and said, you know what, we know you've got your franchise deal with um, Camilla Victorians for the BPL, but guess what? Your time now in test cricket. We know that you can do this. We're calling you up because we know that, when the white when the red ball season starts in the caribbean you're probably going to be in our white ball teams so you're not going to get a chance to prove your point in the red ball season so we're going to call you up to zimbabwe because we recognize your potential if i'm a selector that's what i'm doing 
Can you hear that down the sides and at the back? If I'm a West Indian selector, that's what I'm doing. Do you know why I'm doing that? Because I recognise potential. I recognise where this guy's career should already have gone. And I'm, I recognise the barriers to him pr- being able to prove that he should be in the test squad. So I'm calling him up anyway. If this isn't in the selectors' minds already, then hear me. They're not fit for purpose. If you're not already thinking like this, you're not fit for purpose because our cricket and our international um, demands does not allow for certain players to prove themselves otherwise. Now, some people will listen to this and go, oh, but Mash, they they should just forego their uh, franchise deals and come and just prove themselves in red ball cricket. It's not that simple. Because, yes, okay, there's an argument to say, well, a man can maybe not eat the food for this tournament and come play three, four, three, four games for Leeward Islands, Wimbledon Islands, um, Jamaica, Guyana, Trinidad, Barbados, whatever it might be. But then everyone always forgets that even if they forwent for gold um, franchise deals, they're usually on West Indies white ball duty anyway. This is why Nicholas Puran will never play test cricket for West Indies. Because where? how does the schedule even allow him to play red ball cricket? And that same, and obviously Puran is in demand for all the top, top, top T20 leagues anyway. Brandon King's in that tier underneath Puran. And even he, even he doesn't have uh, the time in his calendar to really prove his point in the domestic season. So I guess that's why I'm saying in the I think I'm calling this video is it Brandon is it Brandon King's time now? Well, I guess I'm trying to say we're going to have to make it Brandon King's time now because there will never be a time for Brandon King to prove that it is his time. I'm not trying to say Brandon King is Brian Lara out here. I'm not even trying to say that Brandon King is a Jimmy Adams out here. But I am saying is what I am saying is that If you have a batter who had previously proven in Red Bull cricket that he's got the game to play it, and it's only through circumstance and calendar clashes that have stopped him being able to prove it in the last three years, you've got to think outside the box. Because if you do not, you'll lose Brandon King to West Indies cricket. Not not white ball cricket, because I think Brandon, I think Brandon loves playing for West Indies and he's obviously in the T20 side. He's a, he's 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 pretty much a guaranteed player in the T20 side. Not so much old GI cricket. He's still got a lot to prove in that format of the game. So it's not like Brandon has turned his back on West Indies cricket, but you couldn't blame Brandon King if he became a player who said, well, boy. I'll never get a test call up because I'm not available to to show that I should get a test call up anyway. We are not in a position. We're not. We're not. Um. We're not like an England and Australia or or an India, where we can send a second string side to enable Brandon King to basically stay at home and and play some red ball cricket. Our best players is our best players. We, we, we don't have like a massive pool of talented players who can prove it at international level. So we know that there is no circumstance where the calendar will allow Brandon King to play a proper full first class season. Before I end this video, there's one saving grace here. The saving grace is that Brandon's already got franchise deals that he can or franchise franchise competitions that like him so he's he's played in PSL he's about to play in BPL like he's in the second tier level of competitions where he he can eat a food so it's not like Brandon King is going to use West Indies cricket to go and get another piece of food he's already eating food but this is a guy when he came on the Caribbean cricket podcast I think about two years ago this was a guy who said to us, I want to play test cricket. And I, I don't think he's one of them ones where he's just saying it because that's the PR answer. I think he genuinely wants to play test cricket. So can we help him then? Can we help the guy? Can we set up a situation that allows him to at least get a little piece and get a goal to prove whether he should be somebody we consider going forward? At, at 28 years of age, 
We can't afford not to do that. We've got six test matches in 2023. If we don't give Brandon a chance versus Zimbabwe, when will he get a chance then? You're going to take him to South Africa. You're going to play test cricket. You're going to you're gonna debut him at home against India in, in the summer of 2023. You've got to think outside the box and in your selections, think about the future. People, as ever. Get in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube. What do you think about that? Should we think outside the box? Should we just select Brandon King and say, almost F the domestic system? Should we just say, you know what, bring man in anyway? Let me know in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on Spotify, Apple, whatever the podcast app of your choice is, at us, at Carib Cricket, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Let me know what you think. Um, I think if you go to our website, there's like a contact form on there as well. Email us if you want to. Let me know what you think. Would you call Brandon King? Let me leave it with this. Would you call Brandon King into your test squad irrespective of domestic, irrespective of him being able to prove it in domestic cricket? And if you did, here's the next part. If you did, who are you dropping for him? Or would you just call him into the squad and say, at least experience what it's like to be in the test setup? As ever, people, I've been Mashal St. Patrick here at one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. We've got more content coming. It's the 17th of December, but we've got more content coming before Christmas and before this year is out in 2022. So don't go anywhere. More content to drop. Let me know what you think about this piece. And as ever, I'll catch you on the other side. Thank you. And good night. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules deem Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket. By the fans, for the fans.